When a group of teenagers breaks into a wealthy man's house, one of them uncovers something so shocking that it shakes him to his core and forces him to reconsider his life choices. At 16, Ryan and his group of friends believed they had it all figured out. They saw themselves as the kings of the world, convinced that everyone owed them something. In short, they were your typical teenagers. They stayed out until the early hours, hung around in large groups at the park, and drank cheap booze bought from the local corner shop by the oldest looking member of the group. In the UK, where the legal drinking age is 18, they were still a few years away from being legally allowed to drink. However, it was all part of the typical teenage experience in the UK, not unusual in the slightest. What wasn't common, though, was their penchant for stealing from people. Yes, teenagers could be rowdy, annoying, self-entitled, and opinionated, but it was very rare for them to steal. Most still had their morals, after all. But Ryan and his gang of friends had started breaking into homes and stealing valuable items they could sell. It started with stealing a few things from in front of houses, then it progressed to pinching items from porches. As their confidence grew, they started taking more risks, actually breaking into homes and climbing through broken windows to get to the goods. They knew it was wrong, but there was a thrill to it, an adrenaline rush they couldn't get any other way. They all loved it, especially Ryan. In fact, Ryan had his eye on a particularly large and extravagant house in a secluded part of the village where they lived. It was behind a large wall and had a long driveway, but Ryan had confidence that he and his teenage friends could get into the house. Rumor had it that a rich old man lived there, so the gang could only dream about what goods they might get their hands on. However, what Ryan didn't know was that breaking into this one particular house would change the course of his life forever. The evening came when the gang decided to break into the house. It was winter, so it was getting dark early. They could easily climb the wall and get into the house without being noticed. And that's exactly what they did. The plan went off without a hitch. As they entered the large house, they looked around in awe at the opulence of it all. Expensive and modern furniture, a large TV and sound system, laptops, watches, and jewelry lying around. It was a dream come true. As Ryan's friends started pocketing items, he made his way quietly upstairs. There was a strange hissing noise that had caught his attention, and against his better judgment, he went to investigate. It was as though it was calling to him, drawing him upstairs, but what he saw when he softly pushed open one of the doors absolutely floored him. It made him both jump out of his skin and bring a lump to his throat. The door led into a bedroom, and lying on the bed was an old man. A long tube went into his nose, and there were various other wires and cables attached to monitors that surrounded his bed. The hissing noise came from a machine that seemed to be feeding him oxygen. Ryan's natural instinct was to quietly close the door and sneak away to help his friends find more stuff to steal. But he was struck by one fact in particular. This man looked exactly like his grandfather. Sure, his granddad had darker hair, more weight on him, and looked a lot healthier, but the resemblance was there. That fact alone stabbed Ryan in the heart. All of a sudden, the old man's eyes popped open and he stared straight at Ryan. He didn't look scared, angry, or even concerned. Instead, he looked a little confused. Ryan, on the other hand, was frozen to the spot. No one had ever spotted him during their break-ins before. He didn't know what to do, yet he couldn't shake the sad feeling that this old man looked like his grandfather. Ryan surprised even himself with what he did next. He raised his hand and waved slightly, giving the old man a smile and saying, Hi. The old man waved him over and asked who he was and what he was doing in his house. His voice was raspy and wheezing but also kind. Ryan felt a massive sense of guilt descend over him like a storm cloud, and he confessed why he and his friends were there. They had broken in to take his things, just for the thrill of it. But instead of getting angry, the old man just laughed admitting that he had been the same way when he was a teenager. This put Ryan at ease somewhat, and the pair started talking. Much to Ryan's surprise, he actually found that he enjoyed spending time with the old man. He found out his name was Nicholas, and he had served in the British Army as a young man, fighting in World War II. He had gone on to get a job as a clerk at a bank, 
eventually working his way up to becoming the manager. His wife, Samantha, had died over 15 years ago, and he had lived a lonely life ever since, amassing money and buying the finest modern things to help fill the gap left by his wife's death. Sadly, though, his health had started declining over the past year or two. His story was an amazing one, full of highs and lows, but time was ticking, and it was nearly three in the morning. Ryan was unsure of what he was going to do. He couldn't go and find his friends now. They were all long gone, and he couldn't continue breaking into houses, knowing they might be stealing from someone as old and wise as Nicholas. Ryan had a choice to make, a big one at that. Did he continue on the path he was on, or did he follow his instincts to go against what his friends were doing and try to change? It was a tricky decision, especially for a teenage boy. But something Nicholas said stuck with him. Being popular is all right, but kindness can change a life. Ryan finally came to a conclusion, and it's one that will melt your heart. You see, Ryan kept returning to Nicholas's house, not to break in though. He'd come to help the old man out, chat with him, or read the newspaper or a book to him. Even though nearly 80 years separated their ages, Ryan found that he had a lot in common with Nicholas. He found that helping him out and making his life easier was far more rewarding and fulfilling than breaking into houses and stealing from people. For over three months, Ryan went every few days to keep Nicholas company. But one day, Ryan arrived at Nicholas's house to find that his aging friend had sadly died. Although Ryan had only known Nicholas for a few months, he felt a deep sense of loss and sadness at his passing. He tried to shake off the feeling by going out and hanging with his friends like he used to, but the sadness still lingered heavy on his heart. Several days later, Ryan received a phone call that left him speechless and utterly shocked. It turned out that Nicholas had no surviving family. His wife had passed away years ago, and his siblings had all died as well. He had no children, nor was he in contact with any nephews or nieces. In his generosity, Nicholas had left his house to Ryan. The grand old house was valued at around $1.5 million, and when Ryan heard the news, he was overwhelmed, almost falling to his knees. The next day, Ryan and his astonished mother went to the lawyer's office, where the legal proceedings were handled. There was a lot of paperwork to fill out and forms to sign, but eventually it was all completed. Ryan was now the owner of Nicholas's house. He couldn't believe his luck, but his eyes filled with tears as he remembered Nicholas's words on the day they met. Being popular is all right, but kindness can change a life. I'm really keen to know your thoughts on this story, so please don't hesitate to share your insights in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it engaging, I invite you to subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Feel free to share this video, take good care of yourselves, and I'm excited to connect with you in our future videos.